She is a digital marketing specialist who can spin the meanest website around. And he's host of the TV show Buzz, which features nonprofit organizations receiving marketing makeovers. Here on Buzz for Good, we talk all things nonprofit, the people they serve and the good they do. And we talk to creative professionals and provide marketing tips and tools to help your nonprofit achieve more. That's right. Buzz. Buzz. Well, greetings, everybody, and welcome to Buzz for Good, where we share the incredible work that nonprofit organizations do in Southwest Virginia, and we provide some marketing tools to help your nonprofit attract more donors, volunteers, and clients to your cause. In other words, so you can be a better Buzz for Good in our communities. I am Michael Hemphill, creator and host of the TV show Buzz that airs on Blue Ridge PBS where on each episode we feature a nonprofit organization receiving a marketing makeover, if you will, from a team of professionals affiliated with the American Advertising Federation of Roanoke who donate their time and talent to help these nonprofits achieve more buzz. I'm Carrie Cousins, president of the American Advertising Federation of Roanoke and director of marketing for Lead Point Digital, a marketing agency here in Roanoke, Virginia. To lead things off, Carrie. Have you heard of building beloved communities? I have actually. And you know, one of the things that struck me most was looking at their content and their values are values that totally resonate with me. Okay. Um, empowerment. Right. You, Gotta love it. Yeah, right. You are an empowered person. Badassery. Well, when I think Carrie Cousins, I think badassery. Inspiration. N- no doubt. And mentorship. If yes. you want four words to talk about the essence of a nonprofit in building communities, I feel like they nailed it. Yes, they are spectacular. So I got to meet the founder, Bonnie Chavez, uh, who started the business in 2018, actually in Albuquerque, New Mexico. And kind of cool is how she then uh, made her way to Roanoke, uh, where she got here and then started uh, trying to promote the business and brought on board Shannon Dominguez, whom she met through a local nonprofit. And well, here is my conversation with them both. Bonnie and Shannon, thank you both so much for coming on to Buzz for Good and sharing more about your business, building beloved communities. And to kind of get things started, how does building beloved communities build beloved communities? Bonnie, you go first. Great, thank you. No, I really appreciate you um, speaking with us today and just giving us a chance to talk about what we do. So we do it in so many ways and it's really about systemic change. So the first part is we offer community-centered business solutions to small businesses. So what does that look like? Well, it's maybe a really good example. Had an organization hire me uh, as their office manager, they're, they were hiring an office director. Um, and so they were getting bigger and that, that person uh, retired. And so we, part of that, we did a financial look and they could save money by changing to a local supplier that printed their, um, to service their photocopier. And so they saved a bunch of money. They got to use a local servicer And with the money they saved, they were able to donate money to a nonprofit that aligned with their values and donate their awesome printer to the same nonprofit as well as paper to get them started, right? So the business won because they saved money and they had economic empowerment to, you know, local business. The nonprofit won because they got a souped up printer And they also got some funds just for operational expenses and a case of paper to get them started so that the nonprofit was more efficient themselves because it had the PDF scanner, which was like really great. Yeah. So that's just a really good example. The other thing we do. Well, first of all, I mean, how cool is all that? That's like win, 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 win. Right. Exactly. Fantastic. Okay. All of that. Like, so that's about, that's community centered business solutions for small businesses. And I'll let Shannon talk about what we do for nonprofits. Okay. So the best way to describe our work is giving an example of what that looks like. So we work, we worked earlier this summer with a local business, Fleet Feet of Roanoke, um, owned by local owners, Blaine and Robin Lewis. They're amazing. And they started, 
right? Everyone says that, everyone knows that. <laughs> but um, they started a nonprofit called Project Forward. And this past summer, they worked with Roanoke City Public Schools to put a pair of brand new shoes, a bag, and a pair of socks to each child who is identified as economically impoverished by the Virginia Department of Education. Right. Now, anyone around Roanoke City knows that the Roanoke City school situation is 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 a big one it's a big issue to address especially with the students that are coming through so we were looking at 56 percent of the students who fell under these guidelines of economically um, impoverished and that translates to eight thousand kids wow. so eight thousand kids brand new pair of brand new name shoes um was an incredible undertaking yeah. so they hired us on to help run the operations of it to make sure everyone got donation receipts to make sure that the sponsors were given the benefits that they were promised and to facilitate and market that project now blaine and robin are so connected that anything they do is going to turn to gold and we were very privileged to have a small part in helping that happen so within 60 days of launching that project that initiative the back to school shoes project we raised over hundred and fifty thousand dollars in cash wow. by the 90 day point we had raised over five hundred thousand dollars of cash and in-kind donations that was just such a huge thing that you know them being owners of a business weren't able to make that happen this first year on their own and right. needed to call in you know, people that have run projects like that before and can make that happen for them. Where was the money coming from? The community. Yeah. So we had small businesses, we had a lot of individuals, and then we had some larger businesses who donated larger, larger amounts. Um, there was one company, I believe, that donated almost 3,000 pairs of sh shoes. So it was incredible to see everyone come together from one individual donating $10 to huge corporations, donating 3,000 pairs of shoes. And all of that collectively created a huge impact for these kids. Wow. So they had this idea and then you guys helped execute it. Exactly. That's what they needed. They needed someone to come in that was going to be able to run a project of that size. And that's what we were able to do. And then one of my favorite things about us is that we're not going to advise that our clients continue to hire us at consulting fees to run this project on a continual basis. So when we stepped away from that project, we handed them over a manual of contacts, a timeline, who to reach out to when, some suggestions for the next round of the project so that they could easily hire and train someone else to replicate that for years to come. And then we're always here for when they're ready to expand. Franklin County, Bedford County have been, you know, poking around and hearing about the Back to School Shoes project and wants to bring that to their area as well. So we'll be here to help with the strategy strategic expansion of that. Um, but otherwise, they have everything they need to keep that project running. Bravo. Bravo. Yeah, That's well, fantastic. And just it to was, like tout, tout yeah, Shannon, like that was her first assignment. <laughs> so I'm wow. just, yeah. And then the last thing that we offer is we do trainings. Yeah. So we like we do executive coaching. Um, and we work with individuals. We love working with women, specifically women of color, but all are welcome. And trainings are great, a great way to get a group together and split the cost. So it's a little bit more cost effective. So, if, you know, a group wanted it to hire us for fundraising. Uh, we can split the cost among five nonprofits or uh, if small business owners want to get together and figure out how to create a giving program. You know, it's a great way to be cost effective and accessible for everyone. Beautiful, beautiful. Well, you've already answered like questions five and six that I had written down. Uh, but why don't we rewind just a little bit? Because I'd really like to know. I mean, so so often I find the origin stories of companies and nonprofits to be uh, more fascinating than you know maybe the work that they're already doing. So I'd love to hear, uh, Bonnie, how you came up with building beloved communities to begin with. Sure, I worked in corporate America at a high executive level position in healthcare, and it was you know, a great job. And it just didn't started to my values and the job started to, to, you know, one degree of separation over time. Uh, and then I was becoming unhappy with it. And, and where I, was this? 
this was in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Okay. Right. And then through a business merger, my position was eliminated. So it really kind of all worked out for the best. And during this time I was tinkering is like, I like to put it in a notebook with a business plan for a consulting sort of do good in the world, but I'm not sure how plan yeah, is, is right. a great way to put it. Uh -huh. And then as soon as I was laid off, I had an opportunity to literally do this work and start and just rumble through it and do my very best. And then, then I started getting a client and then I had more clients and then it just sort of grew and grew. And then I made the decision to move to Roanoke, Virginia, uh, because I love it here. Mm -hmm. There is outdoor spaces. It's gorgeous. It has all four seasons and it's just my place. I love to be outdoors and I love to be in the mountains. So I moved here and I started and I went through the gauntlet program to, you know, really accelerate and move my business. Mm -hmm. and another contract and another right. contract. Oh, 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 I, sorry. I, wanted to, I wanted to get to that in a second. Okay. Yeah. But let's re rewind just a second. When did you start the business? Uh, three years ago in November, 2018. November, 2018. Okay. And yeah. you're in Albuquerque. Uh, how did you hear about Roanoke? Oh, just like through like so many friends, like it, it was a part of a running community. I had friends huh. that lived here. And so I was like, yeah, let's just, let's go visit. And I visited and I fell in love with the people. I fell in love with the spaces. I mean, you could, there was water here. What the heck? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Okay. That's love. I didn't know, uh, you know, what was the connection. So that's fabulous. Apparently somebody's, you know, tourism playbook is working to attract the likes of you from Albuquerque, New Mexico, which some consider a pretty beautiful area as well to roll. Oh, it's gorgeous. So, yeah. yeah. Fantastic. Okay. All right. So anyway, uh, so back to the, you, you move here. And for those who don't know what the gauntlet is, maybe share some about that, if you would, please. Sure. I'll let Shannon speak to that because she was the, the expert. <laughs> okay. So the gauntlet is a 10 week business program followed by a competition. So this past year we had 160 entrepreneurs enter and 60 of those businesses decided to compete for over $300,000 worth of cash and income prizes. And this is coordinated by the Advancement Foundation. Yes, which is a nonprofit located in Vinton. And this is one of the programs that they run. Okay. All right. So Bonnie, you submit building beloved communities in the gauntlet. And this yes. was in 2021. Yes. Okay. Yeah, it started in 2021. Yeah, that's right. how it. And how did that go? Uh, it was it was pretty great. I did pretty well in the, the gold category, and I was excited. I got a lot of exposure. Um, mm -hmm. I felt like it just was a, a huge benefit to my business. But the 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 personal side of that is, I met Kim Wider, uh, who was also there uh, through Elder Care Solutions. And we met and we fell madly in love. And so, so I, I can honestly say I've met this incredible human that I love spending time with and I want to spend the rest of my life with. And I got to get really rooted in the Roanoke area. So I'm so excited about that. So it was, it was a dual benefit uh, for me. <laughs> and I might say that you also met someone else through the gauntlet uh, who is on screen with us. Perhaps, yeah, absolutely. Right? And, and, you know, it was so great because I saw how Shannon worked. I saw how dedicated she was, how personable and authentic she was. And I was always impressed by that. And then, you know, as I started getting success in the, in the work that I was doing, I received a large contract from a nonprofit in New Mexico. And I have the capacity to either do the contract or run my business, but I couldn't do both. And so that's when I, I really decided I need help. I need to expand. I need somebody who can, who can network, who can get me in front of people, who can promote the business and has the savvy to do the work herself as well. And so that is how Shannon, you know, I said, hey, do you want a job? <laughs> <laughs> and so Shannon, your role at the Advancement Foundation had been what? I was the director of business development. So I ran the gauntlet program gotcha. from fundraising to the program, to the mentorship aspect. And it was incredible. Um, there were a few businesses I really kept my eye on. And one of those was building beloved communities. Every time I talked <laughs> to Bonnie, I was like, oh, I love her mission. I love her <laughs> values. I love how she's showing up in this space. 
Um, so when she offered me a job, I was like, I could not believe it. And I immediately <laughs> said yes. <laughs> Fantastic. Now, Bonnie, I mean, what is, I mean, how do you make your money? How do you make money to operate in this space? Yes. So we are a business consulting firm and that's exactly what we do. What sets us apart from other business consultants is that we really focus on community-centered business solutions. How can we not only help the business, small business, like surpass an insurmountable obstacle, but do it with a community consciousness. And then with nonprofits, same thing. We work with nonprofits uh, on a consultant basis and you know, we work with them and we really try to connect them as much as possible with businesses in the community so that their work can be fully supported ongoing. And of course, with individuals and groups, you know, we try to make sure that the co it's cost effective by inviting as many people as possible to a training so that cost is eventually cheaper for each person. So that's how we do it. Okay. Wow. So you mentioned uh, the work that you've done with Fleet Feet here in Roanoke. What are some of the other accomplishments or highlights of your time here in Roanoke, you know, kind of outward looking? Gosh, I, I feel like there's so many that are coming up that are great, right? So the ones things... that we're working on now, I think that's what we should focus yeah. on. Those are really exciting and they've been in the works for a while. Yeah, right. I'll talk about the largest contract we've gotten to date and why, while it's not Roanoke based, it definitely benefits Roanoke. So it's from a nonprofit, the Dream Tree Project, and the it is in the Dream Tree Project. Dream and they, right. yes, and they work on uh, transitional housing and making sure that homeless individuals in Taos, New Mexico are taken care of. And they really focus on LGBTQIA youth, and, <clears throat> but they also serve adults as well. And so why that's beneficial to Roanoke is because the, while the money is coming from New Mexico, the funds land in Virginia because mm. I'm incorporated here in Virginia and I have economic development, therefore hiring a Virginia-based employee, right? So two Virginia-based employees have full-time positions, fully paid benefits and paying taxes to the state of Virginia. So it's really bringing outside dollars um, and big amounts of outside dollars uh, to Virginia and to Roanoke. So that's the biggest one I'm working on, but I'll let Shannon talk about the cool ones that are coming up on her plate. Okay. Um, so I have my little clients up here so I can see them on my desk. Um, but one, we've been working on a volunteer basis with Latinas Network, and that's been pretty incredible. Um, Bonnie set down the entire board and went through a meditation that led us to a strategic plan, which that was in December. It's February 10th. I cannot believe the pieces that have fallen into place. Um, they are focused on economic empowerment and business development and incorporating an internship for the youth, um, youth mentoring. And the pieces that have fallen that are already happening, uh, just stay tuned to Latinas Network because okay. they're doing great things. Now, Latinas, um, but, that's Kat Pascal, uh, owner of uh, Farm Bregeza restaurant in Grand Village and elsewhere. I mean, they're, yeah, they're, she's a mover and a shaker in this. Yeah. Story. Yeah. Yes. And they own their own cleaning company, which is like a pretty good sized cleaning company. So, yeah. and she started this nonprofit, which we're still, we're like very close to receiving the 501c3 status, which is going to be a game changer because it will open up so many more doors for Latinas Network. Okay. Great. Great. All right. Continue, please. Okay. So um, I'm also working with Jen Marie Cliff. Um, she is the owner of JMC Wellness and Healing Academy. She's very closely associated with the Wellnest in downtown Roanoke and Valerie Engel. And she is starting a project called the Vagina Conference. And it's short for short, or VagCon is its little short name. Huh? But this is going to be a virtual summit that's held over three days towards the end of April, April 22nd through the 24th. And the mission of VagCon is to educate and empower women. So financially, spiritually, mentally, physically. Um, so we're bringing in experts from across the world. We're speaking with um, Lauren Barnes out of Lynchburg. She is 
the founder of the Motherhood Collective and just became a sex educator. And she's connecting with a group of panelists from Berlin, Austria, and other places, her different colleagues from across the world to bring this information to women in an accessible, on an accessible platform. So one thing that we're doing to make that accessible is it's completely free of charge. You come, you show up, you get to receive all this information. Now, if you want to receive all this information and a whole back-end version of workshop speakers, podcast panelists, there's a pass that you can buy for 149 where you have a year's access to that. Um, but either way, all women will be nourished and fed and taken care of through this three-day summit. So we're really excited about that. Can you share with me a little bit more about how this conference came about as far as you and how you got connected with? Okay. Yep, Jen Marie Cliff. Um, this was really a dream and a passion of her, something that she wanted to, it, it, honestly, now that I'm talking about it, it's very similar to where Robin and Blaine were where they had these dreams and the possibilities started opening up to where they could really make it happen, but they'd never done it before. And they weren't really sure, you know, what does this look like? What does this entail? What are the different steps? They didn't have a map, a guide, a strategic plan to making it happen. So they hired us on and we're working together through the marketing, creating a strategic plan, a timeline, what needs to be accomplished, what obstacles, you know, what are the connections? So mapping that all out to bring this into fruition, essentially. How cool is that? Awesome. It's pretty cool. And you got to tell them about the Care Colloquium because that's another oh, yeah. awesome project that we're tag teaming. Yes. So the Care Colloquium is going to be in November and it is one of the main sponsors is Elder Care Solutions. Kim Weider is the CEO. And what they're doing is they're bringing 300 uh, leaders in the care economy to come together and talk about solving the care crisis that's happening in our nation. So national conference, bringing all of these folks to Roanoke. It's going to be at the Hotel Roanoke, November 14th through 16th. We have sponsorship opportunities for that as well. But it's fantastic because these folks are coming to beautiful Roanoke. They're going to eat the food. They're going to experience the life here, and they're going to have some real discussions about how they can network and start working on the problems in the care economy on a national level. Like this is a national platform. Like this is some crazy stuff. So we're enjoying working with these individuals that are making not only an impact, um, but like think about this, right? Because if we have people that start making these right decisions and start looking at creative ways to solve this. Uh, then you're looking at folks like women, especially who maybe don't have to miss work uh, because they are now a caregiver, or maybe that we have the, these legislations and things in place or benefits in place so that they can find money to pay for someone to take care of someone that they love and care about so that they can stay at work or they can go and do that themselves, or this person can age in place or not, like really defining that level of care and empowering that caregiver and that family to make those choices. And you know, finances are a priority, but maybe now it's something that's a little easier and they can be a little bit more uh, relaxed and like have that sigh of relief. So having these business leaders come together and tackle these issues is an incredible way uh, to do that. So we're excited to bring them here and, and start working on these problems. Wow, I mean, you guys are just taking this area by storm. <laughs> we're, we're really excited and and we're growing we're growing because soon as we start to continue we want to have another person that does the work and we want another a person who does like our administrative side so we need a super admin and we need a super business guru and we want to get us together and really continue to grow and fortify and galvanize not only the nonprofits in our in our in Roanoke and area but also the small businesses and those individuals who really want to make a difference. And how do we align those three so yep. that these folks can all meet each other and really start lifting up the beloved community. So if people want to connect with you guys, where should they go? Well, we have a new website now. Thank you, okay. Shannon. <laughs> Hey, okay, that was all your idea. Thank you, Sarah Vogel, who took the words out of Bonnie's mouth and then put them on a website because it was, yeah, we're really happy about our website. Okay. And your website is? 
what? Go for it. www.buildingbelovedcommunities.com. Communities, plural. Because yes. we're, we're going for more than just one community with this business, right? We're going absolutely use across the country. So building. Oh, it's world domination and nothing less. I love it. Right. <laughs> So building beloved communities dot com. Com. Yep. Com. Okay. And on social media, where are you? We are on Facebook and Instagram at Building Beloved Communities. And you can also connect with us on LinkedIn, Building Beloved Communities. So so many different platforms, so many different connections, and like so many great people and organizations supporting us and as soon as they hear the name building beloved communities they're like what does that mean and how can i get involved and that is that is what turns a job from work into a career where you're living out your passion yeah yeah bravo uh what else do you want people to know here in this last little few seconds that we have oh you know the name let's talk about the name oh yeah so in 1967, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. had a Christmas Eve speech and he referenced the beloved community. And the King Foundation then further defined it as a community without racism, without sexism, without poverty, without bigotry, without homelessness, you know, all of these ailments in society. It's like, we are not gonna tolerate it because international standards of human decency will simply not allow them to exist. And we will do everything in our power to eliminate these issues. And so I was like, I wanna be a part of that. I have business skills and I wanna do that, but I don't know how. And that's how Building Beloved Communities came into fruition is using these skills and these talents to really fortify and uplift entire communities and start solving these systemic issues. Wow. Well, I mean, that certainly fits in with what, you know, we're trying to do with Buzz for Good. And so uh, we've got to figure out some ways to work together. Yeah, there, right? absolutely. So, so maybe after we uh, wrap up this interview, we can talk more about that. But meanwhile, I just want to thank you both so much for coming on the show here and sharing more about building beloved communities. Thank you all thank so you. much. Thank you so much. All right. And speaking of websites, buzzforgood.com. Please visit us. Visit us on social media at buzzforgood on Facebook and Instagram and LinkedIn. Reach out and let us know what you think of the show and what we can do to hopefully bring more buzz to your nonprofit. Meantime, thank you so much for tuning in today, Carrie, as always. Thank you. Thank you. And we will look forward to seeing you back next time here on WFIR and Buzz for Good.